of the small disparity with the council next term. Okay, uh, let me begin by thanking the organizers uh, for inviting me uh, in this nice workshop. Uh, this is uh, one of the topics that I have been working on for the past uh, some years, and uh, I'd like to share with you for uh, 30 minutes. The main, uh, main thing is uh, that uh, about the uh, beyond Einstein's revolution. Uh, from the theoretical point of view, uh, so uh, from the string, uh, string theory, in the, uh, when we take come down to low energy theory, then we can expect many high order covers of time. So, uh, and uh, also uh, from the recent ob uh, observation of the uh, wave, uh, I guess uh, uh, we can some put also some constraints uh, in such uh, models of the other So the question is, what would be the physical uh, uh, implication for the theory? So uh, what I'd like to uh, show with you is uh, first uh, by uh, studying the and also the effect in the early. Uh, on the, another, my personal uh, motivation is from the holography, uh, according to which we can just convert the equations in the quantum system into the classical gravity equation in one dimensional time. In that case, it's the uh, AS bracket. However, uh, the, in the uh, uh, real, uh, real world of uh, quantum field theory, it is only asymptotically uh, the eight uh, It is uh, asymptotic freedom and uh, so coupling is running. So which means in terms of the geometry, it is only asymptotically ABS. It's, it should be uh, deviated from the uh, ABS space. So the, uh, as a simplest example, uh, what I'd like to consider is the, uh, the uh, some uh, adding higher covers of terms. Okay, uh, here uh, also the just uh, the, uh, what I wanted to say here is that to understand the phase condition of the uh, holographic QCD, for example, in terms of the geometry, we do need two different geometry. Phase condition is the uh, change of the geometry uh, uh, according to the holographic principle. So in the high temperature, it is a black hole geometry, while in the low temperature, it is not black hole. However, in the typical uh, the models, it is by hand. So the, it would be really desirable if we can have some natural candidate of the uh, 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 gravity model uh, in which we can have both phases uh, at once rather than controlling everything by hand. So that's uh, the uh, radio motivation. Okay. Here, uh, uh, what I wanted to say in this page is that, uh, so starting from the linear term of the Einstein gravity action, uh, we are adding quadratic term, and uh, there can be, in principle, many uh, more general theories. Uh, in that sense, uh, adding gauss bonnet uh, term is the simplest extension of the, uh, beyond the Einstein gravity. Okay. So that's uh, my motivation, and uh, uh, then I, I'd like to begin by uh, considering the black hole solutions in, uh, in, uh, in the uh, gravity theory with gauss bonnet term, and then cosmological implication. First, uh, let me just uh, slowly begin uh, by uh, reviewing uh, this uh, short black hole that everybody knows well. So here is the action and the black hole solution. Here, what I want you to emphasize is that uh, the black hole mass is uh, any constant. So in other words, there is no lower bound in the uh, black hole mass. So uh, in other words, uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is so no uh, the temperature uh, below which uh, uh, no black hole solution exists. So anyway, so uh, so this is a. Uh, so the one thing that I'd like to emphasize, there's no low bound. I'm not talking about the evolution of the star, where naturally uh, two small uh, stars cannot form black hole. But uh, what I'm saying is the mathematical, as a mathematical solution, any tiny mass can form black hole. <coughs> and another thing is that uh, if we just add some Dilaton field here, then Dilaton is constant. In other words, uh, that's the solution. And in other words, there is no hair. 
So there is no hair and also there is no lower limit in that. That's what I want to emphasize. So in the case of ABS bracket, uh, so, uh, so by adding some of uh, cosmological constant, which is negative, then uh, we have uh, essentially two branches, a small bracket and a large bracket. And uh, for the small bracket, that's uh, quite uh, similar to the usual uh, the, uh, flat case. Uh, while in the large bracket case here, um, uh, it's a somewhat uh, different behavior, and it's a really dominant state. Okay. Now, uh, here comes the, uh, the theory that I'd like to uh, investigate. Here we have Einstein gravity and it's a Gauss monitor and also the Lapton field. Then we can have a black hole solution here. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the, uh, sorry, sorry. But if we just add Gauss monitor, uh, because this is topological in four dimension, does not uh, appear in the equation of motion, so nothing changes after this level. So uh, to really uh, make this uh, effect of this one, we will let the coupling uh, rather than constant being depend on the Dilaton field. Uh, but I guess uh, somehow I, since I lost some page, I'm afraid I, let's not, I, when I just, uh, if there was something wrong in my, okay, it should be this one. So the uh, model that I'd like to study is this one. So we have uh, uh, the Einstein gravity and also Gauss bonneton. Uh, so here we have a coupling which depends on the dilaton. If dilaton were constant, this is uh, nothing but some uh, boundary term. So it does not affect any uh, equation motion. But so here we have some uh, coupling here. So Gauss bonneton is uh, some special combination of the rigid scale and uh, rich tensor and uh, the Riemann tensor here. There are two parameters here, alpha and the gamma. But alpha can be absorbed by descaling. So we can descale the distance, and all alpha will disappear. So in other words, the only uh, the physics that we are interested in is the signature of the uh, alpha, whether alpha is positive or negative. And the next one is a gamma. So if gamma equals to, so the sign of the gamma is arbitrary, we can choose any sign. So we will choose gamma to be positive. So if gamma equals to zero, then uh, since Gauss momentum does not play any role, it is essentially the same as the, uh, the Scholz's case. And if gamma is getting bigger and bigger, that means we are deviating more and more from the Einstein gravity. And the Gauss momentum uh, plays more important role. OK, that's the collective uh, base text. And if we just uh, take a look at the equation motion, then uh, as a uh, uh, as a result of the presence of Gauss bonnet term, you can immediately, immediately see that Dilaton uh, equal to constant or zero is not consistent. Uh, if you put phi equal to uh, constant or zero, still uh, uh, this term is not uh, vanishing. So, but uh, this one is uh, this term is zero. So it's, it's, it is inconsistent. So in other words. Consistent solution always uh, requires non-trivial uh, dilaton field. So in other words, there must be always uh, some uh, scalar hair. However, that scalar hair charge is not independent, but uh, uh, determined uh, completely by the uh, mass of the black hole. That's one thing. And the, uh, then, uh, here come, uh, so, uh, for the solution, uh, the, we can uh, do all, all numerically, but not analytically. So here, uh, let me just uh, explain uh, in the next page here. Uh, first, uh, short shift black hole case is this, uh, this line, straight line. This is a zero. So the uh, the, uh, the horizon, horizontal horizon, and the mass is a straight line. They are related. However, so this is the case when gamma equals zero. If we just turn on any tiny piece of gamma, or the, if we just turn on the Gauss bonnet the solution, rather than coming up to zero mass, it stops somewhere here. So in other words, there exists minimum mass, below which there does not exist any uh, black hole solution. 
if we turn on uh, Gauss momentum uh, more, in other words, if we increase m a little bit, then the solution, black hole solution, stops earlier. So in other words, the minimum mass is larger. So if m is larger, then the, they stop earlier and earlier. That's what happens. So in other words, uh, there exists a uh, minimum mass below which no black hole solution. That's a very different from the Einstein gravity. And uh, the minimum mass, of course, is increases as uh, the coupling is uh, becoming larger and larger. So in a sense, Gauss bonnet term, uh, qualitatively, we may say that it makes gravity less attractive. In other words, if we have some uh, mass and uh, no other forces, what can we imagine uh, except uh, forming black hole? So any tiny mass can form black hole. However, if uh, the uh, attractiveness of uh, gravity is not strong enough, then for some tiny mass, uh, the gravity is not strong enough to really make the solution to be black hole. So that's, uh, we may interpret it that way. OK, uh, so that's the uh, black hole uh, property. And uh, so the, to understand the, uh, the uh, signature of the uh, gauss bonnet term, we studied uh, the alpha negative case. And the, uh, so uh, here, this is the case comparing the solution for the alpha positive and the negative. As I uh, mentioned, the alpha dependence is trivial, just a square root uh, alpha dependence. Uh, so just scaling, but uh, I just wrote uh, alpha as a varying, just to consider eventually alpha goes to zero limit more detail. But anyway, so. Uh, the, uh, the alpha dependence is trivial. So for fixed alpha, so as uh, the, we go from the black to red, uh, uh, blue, and uh, uh, green, uh, as you see here, this is the minimum mass. So minimum mass is increasing, keep increasing. So minimum mass increases as gamma increases. Gamma increasing means gauss bonnet coupling is increasing. So gauss bonnet is more and more important. So minimum temperature is zero or not zero? Minimum temperature is not zero. So uh, there may be some one case. Uh, the temperature is uh, determined not by the size of the horizon, but uh, uh, the uh, uh, surface gravity. Uh, but uh, it's not zero. And the, uh, for the alpha uh, negative case, uh, it's a very strange behaving. So first, the minimum mass is increasing, then decreases again. We can draw somewhat different way here. As a, uh, as a function of gamma, if we just call the positive alpha, if we keep uh, increasing the uh, coupling of the gauss bonnet term, then as you see here, the minimum mass is increasing. However, however for negative alpha, the minimum mass is increasing but decreasing again. But here, one thing that I'd like to mention is that so, uh, I guess my picture is not that uh, good in, in the sense that I did not yes. reflect it here with scale. It's so only 3 no. and this is 12. So the negative part is much, much smaller. So it's uh, quite weaker. The minimum mass is much smaller than the positive case. But anyway, so behavior is also somewhat different. So this is the uh, qualitative, uh, roughly qualitative, we may say that uh, it's a less attractive uh, for the gauss bonnet term. But once we uh, change the sign of the gauss bonnet term, uh, it's the uh, uh, less effectiveness is somewhat weaker. So that's what we can say by looking at the mental results. So far, uh, this was this case without any cosmological constant. Once we add cosmological constant, we can get also the uh, solutions. Here, uh, what I want to, uh, want to just uh, mention here is that uh, as we uh, turn on here, uh, so uh, we mentioned that for the uh, uh, sympathy ADS case, there is a small black hole and a large black hole. Uh, if the couplings are somewhat uh, large enough, the so minimum mass is beyond that region, and uh, there, uh, there's only some one, uh, one branch actually here, here or uh, the, for the uh, stable solutions. And the minimum mass is also increasing as we increase the, uh, the, uh, what's the parameters there. 
uh, that's the uh, case. So here, uh, the main motivation was uh, whether uh, this kind of thing can be applied for the some realistic uh, flow graphing method, but we are not at that stage yet. So what I'd like to briefly mention here is uh, consider is about the stability. So the under the, uh, the perturbative uh, perturbation, uh, the black hole, most of the black hole solutions are stable, also this one also. But here, what I'd like to consider is a uh, non perturbative stability. In other words, uh, some uh, fragmentation. So we are quite used to, uh, I mean, we already observe that the two black holes can merge into a single black hole. This is what we observed already. So in other words, by merging a uh, small black hole into some larger black hole, uh, they are more thermodynamically stable. That's, that's the plus, uh, that's the according to the second law of the thermodynamics. The question is whether the other way around is possible or not. So we have uh, some single black hole, but suddenly through some uh, thermal tunneling or quantum tunneling or whatsoever, suddenly a single black hole split into two black holes. Of course, such things are not possible in Einstein gravity. But we are deviating from the Einstein gravity, so we uh, wanted to check uh, this kind of possibility. So the conclusion is, or uh, the simple, uh, simple conclusion is that we found some parameter range in, uh, uh, in the theory in which uh, they can be, uh, they are unstable under fragmentation. That's the conclusion. So let me uh, show you a little bit more. Uh, first, for the short-shift black hole, if uh, the, uh, the single black hole is uh, decaying into, uh, let's say, if we compare the entropy of the single black hole and the two black hole with the mass fraction delta and the one minus delta, then the final two black hole entropy and the single uh, initial uh, entropy uh, is uh, easily, uh, you can, it's uh, simply uh, nothing but the area. It's uh, easy to uh, evaluate and you can find that it is always smaller than one. In other words, two black holes has uh, less entropy, so it's a uh, less preferred. So single black hole is preferred. However, so, but here, if delta is becoming smaller and smaller going to zero, it is saturating the equality. In other words, they are marginally stable on the very tiny uh, spinning of the black hole. But they are stable, but uh, there's uh, some dangerous region is a very tiny black hole spinning up. Uh, uh, fermentation, you can speak of uh, some material and those can carry entropy, which can depend on volume. So we can also put the to account those. So here for the uh, black hole, uh, the whole simplicity, we consider only the black hole entropy as the area of the mass. The, the, the mass is the same. The, the, the total mass is the same. Total mass is a one, let's say. In this, uh, so, so in the, in the well, initial a, mass unit. That's uh, against the, the same dynamic, the same the, uh, entropy. Only we expect the entropy should be increased. Right? This, uh, this is an isolated system. The very beginning, you have the one black hole. Then at the end, they have two black holes. We expect that the entropy should be increased rather than decrease, do we? What I am saying is that we compare the single black hole and the two separate black holes, uh, the sum, whose sum of the mass is the same as original because of the energy conservation. Yeah. Then compare the entropy or compare the area, the uh, horizon area. Yeah. Which one is bigger? So, which one is the uh, entropically preferred state? That's what I did. And as we know already, uh, in the shortest case, black holes never decay into smaller black holes. So in other words, uh, the, uh, the two black holes are always uh, the, uh, with the less horizon size. That's what we do know, right? So merging, then, merging is more natural process. Merging is natural, right. That's what we are used. And the question is, is it true also for the modified gravity theory beyond Einstein gravity? That's the question. But we can also suit something up the black hole. You know, Hawking radiation, we can just uh, radiate and it become low gravity. Okay. Yes, also Here the, uh, the simple uh, assumption is that we don't consider any some uh, extra energy of the, in terms of the radiation or gravitational waves or whatsoever, only the, to simplify everything. 
on in the single bracket into two bracket stand. That's the simplest situation. Of course, there can be, you know. So I guess in terms of the reading order, this is maybe a great so the entanglement of the two black holes when it's split, it, is it relevant for this calculation or nothing uh, to If uh, there may be some uh, entropy, but it would be negligible. Or we may say that we neglected all such complications. But simple, so the most, I mean, I'm very simple-minded and uh, don't know any high math. So just air, just air. So, and I think such things would be negligible if the black holes are large. To entangle it. So we do not consider such such Okay, uh, then the uh, the answer is this one. So this here, uh, as uh, as I mentioned, uh, we can fix some alpha. So bearing of alpha dependency is just square root alpha dependency, so it's not uh, so it's not important. So uh, if it's here, uh, one thing that I'd like to uh, emphasize is that. For the uh, Dilaton-Einstein uh, gauss bonnet uh, theory, there is some minimum mass. Let's say if the minimum mass is 0.4 in some unit, then uh, to have a uh, split into two 0.4 records, so the initial mass should be at least 0.8, because 0.4 is the minimum, uh, minimum mass. So 0.7 uh, is uh, absolutely stable, because we cannot decay into uh, the uh, two black holes because I mean the beyond point four there is no black hole. Right? So the uh, mass should be two times bigger than the minimum mass always. So if the initial mass is uh, smaller than twice of the minimum mass, it is absolutely stable. It's a dynamics just prevent any instability. So uh, here uh, in the some some mass there is no black hole solution. And uh, at the twice in the region between the mass and the twice of that, uh, it's a uh, uh, stability is guaranteed by dynamics. Then depending on the alpha, there can be some region by entropy. In other words, two uh, separate black holes can have larger area. So there is an entropic people. And then again, uh, so a much higher mass is again stable. So there can be some window that makes uh, the black holes unstable in the, uh, once you add Gauss bonnet However, if the gamma is large enough, then such window will be closed, closing again. So everything is just, I mean, the parameter dependent. So we may draw in some other picture, it's more complicated. So for given, so we are changing actually gamma. So for uh, typical gamma values here, no solution, Table, but uh, if they are, uh, uh, and then for some typical, like this is the uh, boundary and uh, some, so some complication. I don't want to uh, explain the detail, but uh, uh, so we can, uh, uh, so this is kind of the phase diagram in the, in, uh, inside the, uh, par, uh, in the uh, parameters of the theory. Now, let's uh, move on to the uh, implementation to the cosmology of this Gaussian atom. So we start from the Einstein gravity plus the uh, inflaton, let's say in this case, and then add Gaussian atom. Then evolution of the universe with, in the friedman robertson metric uh, will be like this. So red color is the extra terms that you get due to the presence of Gaussian atom. And the question is, what is the implication of these extra red color terms to the cosmology? Uh, let me be uh, some special. So one thing is that the rolling is, uh, uh, so they are rolling, slow rolling. Rolling is faster compared to the case without any Gauss bonnet term. So that's one thing. In other words, I mean, the, uh, the Gauss bonnet term is kind of kicking. So even though it's a very, uh, the original, uh, it's a very almost flat potential and uh, rolls slowly, but uh, with the Gauss bonnet term, they roll somewhat faster. So the e folding time is uh, smaller. And the, uh, depending on the, uh, the uh, couplings, anyway, so we, you can, as you can see here, you can see all the uh, inflation solutions here. And the, so if you just look at the, this kind of potential, you may say that, okay, so if, uh, if this is a potential, 
the initial uh, the scalar field may never uh, roll over this potential behavior. But uh, uh, as a, uh, uh, due to the presence of the Gauss momentum, this may go above the hill and uh, uh, fall down. So even that is possible. That's the, due to the presence of the Gauss momentum. In other words, Gauss momentum is kicking the scalar field a little bit, uh, giving some extra kinetic energy, so that they can roll over that. But the outcome of this is that the spectrum can be blue shift. And the final object uh, is uh, this one. Usually, we are given some potential of the uh, implant, let's say. Then, out of that, we compare, uh, we get all the uh, spectroscopy data. Like, I mean, the uh, scalar, uh, and also scalar tensor ratio and the uh, scalar uh, uh, index here. Um, the question is kind of inverse scattering problem. Can we re reconstruct the potential out of the spectral data here? So here we have um, the potential is a function. So if we know uh, the uh, spectral indices as a function of time or as a function of uh, evolution or uh, uh, the energy or uh, the time, then it's so just a matter of the reconstructing the potential. So the result is that, uh, so uh, let me just, uh, so just like I mean the uh, inverse scattering problem. So as an example, if we are given some uh, scalar index and uh, scalar to tensor ratio in some specific functional form, uh, based on that relation, we can rec reconstruct the potential. So uh, uh, okay, that's uh, the property of the Gauss momentum to the uh, inflation. Let me summarize. <coughs> we try to understand the uh, the Gauss uh, uh, momentum uh, role. First, we studied the uh, black hole case here. As you see here, the uh, most important thing is that they have some minimum mass below which there is no black hole solution. And uh, then uh, the, we also explain the meaning of the alpha sign. Sign is positive in the negative case. And the uh, next thing is uh, also the uh, instability under the fragmentation. And uh, there are some parameter range that the uh, uh, black hole may be fragmented into smaller black holes. And also finally, to, uh, to the cosmological implications, we study some consistent of um, the, from the observation, what is the consistent uh, the parameter range, and uh, and, uh, and uh, also the another thing is uh, whether we could also reconstruct the potential out of this uh, uh, observational spectral image. So that's what uh, so you can read this one, and that's what I want to say. Thank you. Get that you have minimal mass, is it? I mean, are you using that the, if it's below the minimal mass, there's no horizon? In that sense, that there's no black hole. That is right. That is okay. Right. So, and just two comments. Um, so, first of all, I think that there's some, there's been a series of paper arguing about positivity bounds on alpha. So that, that uh, for example, from Peter Aaron Hall, Aaron Wall has some five dimension discussion about entropy and how the wrong sign of alpha gives you some problem with entropy. Implies the, the same will hold for the, the exponential pi or square in, in four dimensions. So that's uh, I mean the so from the some cosmological. No, no, that's just from in, black hole entropy discussion in five dimensions. Because uh, as you say, that r r square is Gaussian is topological, so it's, but in five dimensions not. Topological. It's not topological. Yeah, right. and then there's some entropy, but then that also has implication when you compact the body. And the uh, alpha should not be too big, is that? No, there's a sign. A sign. A sign. One, one, one sign, sign is, is correct, correct and the other one is, oh, I see, okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Didn't and know. also the third comment is that it's just that uh, there's also, if you have R squared, there's a causality violation, and that, that it's possible that that's by another C9 is collaborating. In and four dimensions? In four dimensions, you can show that, what, what the exponential pi R squared would have to have causality violation. And, and so that would imply that the, the scale that you have in front of the alpha, that implies some certain cutoff of the new particle. And that, that was supposed to come in to say causality. 
Oh, it's a oh, cos oh, it's a cos connector. Yeah. Not the usual R square. I see. Because I mean, it's a, a second order uh, differential equation, right? It's, it's not high order. It's due to the special combination. Yes. Uh, so we don't have any goals, but but the no, no, it's not about goals. No, it's, it's it's really about just classical background. That you can see that the time delay has a wrong sign. That's the kind of stuff. <coughs> okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. So then it's just two points. The question? Actually, I my question is similar. I because I my question was causal of this. Is there any special meaning of the scale of the alpha? So you can always rescale alpha by changing the, the development field. In the asymptotically flat case, that can be done. But uh, so uh, my interest is also with the Hamilton constant. In that case, I don't think you can scale it. Scale it. Why not? Because it's a cosmological from the independence of scale. Well, but the Hamilton constant. Uh, I didn't write down here, maybe, but uh, a little bit more. It's not the real constant, but the with some uh, effect factor. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I think. Yeah. <coughs> okay.